Today I'll be implementing Conway's Game of Life in Rust using Bevy Game Engine. Behind the scenes it uses Entity Component System. Entity Component Systems are basically separated into three main categories. Entities, Components and Systems. Components are similar to Unity Components except that the logic is moved out and into the systems. And Entities are just unique identificators or some abstract concept. So entity is basically composed of different components. A very simple example would be to have a health component and a health system. In the system or function, we would go over all the entities with a health component and decrease this health value. Then we, were, we would set this system to run every 0.5 seconds. And that would mean that every 0.5 seconds, this system would query all the entities for a health component and decrease their life. For more information, I highly suggest reading the Bevy documentation or searching the internet for the entity component systems. Let's first create the assets folder. And in the assets folder, we'll create fonts folder and sprites folder. I already have the fonts and sprites which I drew in a sprite and you can get them below in the description from my github. Let's add the bevy dependency to our project and let's add the prelude to our main file. This will import all the necessary things we need. Now let's create an app. And let's include a window descriptor resource. Window descriptor resource just tells the app uh, what title it has and the width and height. And I'll leave the rest as default. Uh, we'll also add a plugin with the default plugins. Uh, default plugins include a lot of plugins, which are like scene plugin, asset plugin, etc. Uh, basically, what you need to know is that a plugin has many systems and components, basically like a module, and plugins are just a bunch of modules or plugins, um, as the name suggests, right? Let's run Cargo Run. And yeah, we get the window with the title. So everything works as it should. Before I forget, let's just define grid size. Uh, our game of life will have a constant grid size of 100 in X and 100 in Y direction. Now let us define our own plugin. This will be user interface. We'll have a few buttons. So basically to play simulation, to stop simulation and to quit the app. These three buttons will be in the panel below, which will have a border around its corners. The three buttons will have three colors, one for normal, hovered, and press state. And then we will need to emit events, such as start simulation, stop simulation, and exit game. Anyway, we'll first define the constant colors of the buttons. After that, we will define the plugin where we can build the app so in a sense, you do the same as we did in the main function. And we will set up a setup function or system, which will be run only at the beginning. After that, we'll define the user interface. We'll add the two functions to help us build the button bundle and the text bundle. So the button, the actual button and the text within the button. And then we'll add the only important system, which is the button behavior and event writing. So basically, as we can see, we implemented the plugin traits for our main menu plugin, which 
has a build function that it looks like the same procedure as in the main function in our main file. Uh, then we have this setup system, uh, which will be run only at startup, and it has these commands which are used to spawn uh, entities or component and add components to these entities. Um, spawn bundle is basically bundle is sort of a struct with bunch of components gathered together, such as like the component you can see above in the head. So as you can see, we spawn the UI camera bundle, uh, which we'll, we will need for the user interface. And we also accept in the setup asset server uh, by immutable reference, which is res. Asset server will be used to load fonts and sprites, as you will see later on. Let's now add the structs for if the events, such as stop, start, simulation, and exit game. And let's also add the classic button component, which will be used to query the entities and the button type. Uh, so start, stop, and quit button types. Uh, this will be needed to write or send the correct event. Now, writing user interface in Bavi, at least as far as I know, is very verbose. So we'll write two helper functions, button to get the button and to get the text for the buttons. Then we will use these two functions in our user interface code, uh, where we spawn node bundles. These are basically UI elements, and we'll set these buttons as children to these node bundles. Another interesting thing to note is that in Bavi user interface, y axis is inverted so everything goes from bottom up and not top down Now we'll add the node bundle for the root, which will spend the entire game screen. I'll add with children with a method with, named with children a child to this root node that will spend only the bottom 100 pixel, but the entire width. And then I'll add with with children again a uh, background panel so the first one will just be the border and the second one will be the fill and now last time with children i'll add the three buttons that are necessary this with children method accepts a closure with a parent parameter and this parent is then used to spawn ch children to, to the method um, sorry to the node bundle As you can see, the user interface can get really verbose real fast.
now we'll add the three buttons to this bottom fill. We'll use again with children method uh, and call on the parent spawn bundle and we'll use our already defined functions for building classic button and building classic text for our button. This classic text will again be uh, used with children method on the button to spawn it as a child to this classic button. So now we need to add our main menu plugin to the main app function. As we def the added the uh, default plugins, the same we need to do with this main menu plugin. And also we need to introduce the namespace. If we can go around the app now, we can see our buttons and the panel with the border at the bottom. And it's extendable across the whole width. Now we are actually left with implementing the system, so the function that will handle the logic. So let's think for a second. Our system needs to handle the changing of colors based on hover press and we need to emit events based on the, bu the button type. So if we click play, we need to emit start simulation. If we click stop, stop simulation, and we click exit, we need to emit exit event. We now need to query for a few components. For interaction component, UI color and classic button, which we inserted in our entity. And we need to add another condition based on change interaction and change interaction with the button component so that we only get the entities that are necessary. Uh, and then we need to get the event writer for all the three events, such as simulation, start event, simulation, stop event, and game exit event. Now we'll iterate over interactions query and based on the interaction, the type of the interaction, either none, hovered, clicked, we will change the color to appropriate color. Also, if the interaction was clicked, then we will base on the button type, emit a correct event. So if the button type was start, write to start writer. If it was stop, write to stop writer, etc. And that's pretty much it as far as the button systems goes. Now we just need to add the button system as a 
system to our app in the plugin and run the game to see if everything works correctly. By the way, we won't see the effects of our event sending because we need to add listeners before we actually can observe <laughs> the button effects.